please rock. Please rise. may be seated. I'd like to welcome you here today for um, the funeral service for William Beamish. And um, at this time also, I'd like to invite you to stay afterwards with us. If anyone would like to invite you to stay and have lunch with them, it's been catered in. And so immediately following the service, uh, we'll be having lunch back in the Commons area. William Beamish, age 78, of Ogallala, Nebraska, passed away on Friday, August 13, 2021, at the Ogallala Community Hospital. William was born in Portland, Oregon, on St. Patrick's Day, 1943, to Warren and Gladys Beamish. They later moved to Chadron, where he attended all his years of elementary and middle school. Upon his high school graduation from Chadron High School in 1962, he enlisted in the United States Navy, where he proudly served for four years. William married Betty Davis in 1967, and they had three children together, Rebecca, Vincent, and Mark. They remain friends to this day. After discharging from the Navy and starting his family, William spent almost his entire career working as a nursing assistant for Fort Meade, V-A-M-E-C, in Sturgis, South Dakota. When he eventually retired, he had put in almost 40 years with the federal government. William married Mary Eleanor in 1992, and they enjoyed 29 wonderful years together. After a couple years of cross-country moves, 14 years ago, they decided to put down roots in Ogallala and have loved every minute of it. He was proud of Ogallala and its people, and breakfast at Taco Jams was one of the highlights of William's day. William loved animals, big and small. He often reminisced about pets he had growing up, and was constantly concerned about the welfare of abused animals. He loved to take photographs, to cook, and to collect cookbooks. He was a shopper. That man was always looking for a bargain. He was known for telling a joke or two, and even when his health started to falter, he still didn't go anywhere without his top hat securely perched on his head. He attended New Hope Church. He is survived by his wife Mary, daughter Rebecca, and her husband Ryan Oates of Ogallala, his son Mark Beamish of Ontario, Canada, his sister Bonnie, and her husband Bush Moody of Chadron, his grandchildren, R.J. and Zoe Oates of Ogallala, and three stepsons, Todd, Sean, and Kevin Marshall. He was preceded in death by his parents, Warren and Gladys, and his son, Vincent. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for Bill. We're going to miss him here. But Lord, we thank you that today, Bill is in heaven with you because he has a great Savior. Father, we just thank you for that. We rejoice in that, but we're going to miss him here. Father, we commit this service to you. We pray that most importantly, this service would bring great honor and glory to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, um, the grandchildren, Ryan and Zoe, will come forward. Come on up, guys, and read a couple of scripture passages.
Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you the rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am a gentle and humble in heart, and you will find the rest over your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Then the people brought the little children to Jesus for, for him to place his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples rebuked them. Jesus said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom he had, he placed his hands on them. He went on from there. This time we're going to sing Rock of Ages, and you're welcome to stay seated and join us as we sing this amazing hymn. Good morning. I'm Todd Marshall, the oldest son of Mary, and I just want to, from our side of the family, say thank you to you, friends, for uh, your friendship to them support of them and your ongoing support of my mom, Mary, as she walks through these days. I also want to publicly just say thank you to Becky and her family for honoring her dad by uprooting from California literally within the last two weeks and moving here to care for them. It's been a, a stunning week for them. Um, and their willingness to honor my mom by being committed to uh, watching over her moving forward as they're committed to staying here in Colorado. So thanks so much, guys. God bless you. I'm actually going to invite you to stand while we sing. So you can do that now if you are able. And uh, let's be comforted and strengthened by the words of this great song, Rock of Ages. Okay, this keyboard must have thought I had to shut off, so sorry. <laughs> Rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Bill. Forgive me for not calling him William. I knew him as Bill. 
and um, I think most of us did. Um, it was so fun because um, we, Eric and I both would give Bill a hard time because Bill would sit in the same spot every Sunday in the far back of the overflow in the worst spot in the house. You couldn't see the stage very well <laughs> from where um, he sat, but that, he was a creature of habit and he was not going to move uh, from that spot. So um, I, I'm sure, Mary, you're free to sit anywhere now, right? <laughs> um, you would see Bill coming in the parking lot with the top hat. You knew he was coming in. They were always one of the first ones to the service. And so I um, got the opportunity to visit with them in the lobby uh, several times. And not only that, but you would see wherever um, Bill was, there was Mary. Uh, one of the things that is very clear is that Bill took very good care of Mary. He loved you very much. And that's something that we can all be blessed with is a spouse that loves us and will stick with us through thick and thin. And Bill was a good husband to Mary. I also heard lots of stories as I visited with the family about Bill and animals. And he had a pet duck, apparently, uh, when he was a boy that he talked about a lot. <laughs> And the duck would eat dog food, as I understand it, and it was one of his favorite pets. So, uh, Bill loved animals. Um, also, uh, a really endearing story that Becky told um, the other day was uh, she was a little girl, and Bill said, Hey, I, I have um, something I need you to go get out of the car. And she's like, Oh, I gotta go help dad again. And he, she probably thought, you know, groceries, something like that. It really did not want to go out to the car. But finally, she goes out to the car and he bought her a new bike. And um, so Bill loved his family, loved his children, and loved his wife, and loved his grandkids. And so um, this is a sad day, but today we rejoice because we have a good shepherd. And Bill, as much as he loved, and as much as we loved Bill, he had flaws. And those flaws were called sin. We all have it. It's a problem for every single person. Sin is, is the biggest problem that we all have. But thankfully, uh, Bill understood that he was a sinner. And one of the things that amazed me about Bill is that he was amazed at God's grace. He was amazed that God could love him the way that he did. And Bill understood that he was a sinner in need of God's grace and mercy. And he surrendered his life to Christ and he entrusted in Jesus as his own personal Savior and Lord. Because of that, Bill had a good shepherd. And we're going to read now Psalm, the 23rd Psalm by David. And, you know, often you hear this passage read at, at funerals. And, and sometimes it's read as though those who don't know Jesus or, or know the Lord, they don't they truly can't understand this. But those of us who are here today who have trusted in Jesus as our own Savior, Lord, I want you to know this is who God is to you and who he is to me. It's not just words on a page. These are words that come alive in us as Christians. And, and I want you to embrace these words today because these are the words of comfort and hope. And here they are, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want you to hear me on this. When we are having a good day and our circumstances warrant God is good, when he's leading us beside the quiet waters, when he's refreshing our souls, God is good. I also want you to know that God is good in the darkest valley. That's why David could write, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. God was good to take Bill. 
God was good. See, if we truly trust in the sovereignty of God, then we know that this was Bill's time to go. And we can rejoice in that. We can embrace that because Bill knew the great shepherd. He knew God in an intimate way. And God was good in the darkest valley. And I want you to know this morning as you grieve Bill and as we grieve Bill together that God is good and that he's with us and we can trust that he's never going to leave us. He's never going to forsake us. In fact, his goodness and his love will get us to the other side just like it has Bill. And as we read in verse 6, surely your goodness and love follow me. God's love will never leave. And, and listen, our faith depends on his goodness and his love for us. It doesn't depend on us. It's a good thing because we don't get it right. But his love and goodness will follow us all the days of our life. And listen, I will, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That is what we get when we receive salvation. A God who walks with us in the good times. A God who walks with us in the bad times. And a God who will get us safely into heaven's gates over to the other side. And we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want to make it very clear today as I preach the gospel here. Is that the way that we get to the other side is not by our own effort. Listen, Romans 3.10 and Romans 3.23 for all of sin and fallen short of the glory of God. That means that there, there's nothing good in us that, that can make God love us. In fact, God loves us in spite of our sin. That's why he sent Jesus to die on a cross in our place. John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. That's the God who loves us. So how do we respond to that love? That's the question. If we've never responded to that love or we never respond to that love, then we are rejecting Jesus and we're saying, no thanks, I don't want what you have offered me. See, we think that somehow when we step onto the other side as Bill did just recently and we die, that someday we'll stand before God and God will stand there and say, well, see, your good deeds outweigh your bad deeds. But I want you to know that's not true. That's not what the Bible teaches. If we stand before God and we say, God, I'm a good person, then we're trampling on what he did for us and sending his son Jesus to die in our place. Because if our good deeds are just good enough, then why did Jesus have to die on the cross? And so our only hope is Jesus. Jesus in John 14, 6 said, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no man comes to the Father except through me. Guys, I got news for you. Every other religion in this world is wrong. Our good deeds, they're wrong. They're not enough. Our only hope is in Jesus, and he is the one who will get us safely to the other side. And so here's the answer. As was read by Zoe just a moment ago when Jesus had the little children coming to him. Jesus said, let them come. There was a moment where Jesus was ministering on this earth. And this is also recorded in Mark chapter 10 uh, verses 13 through 15. And, and these little children were coming up to Jesus and they were seemingly interrupting Jesus' important ministry of ministering to the adults. And the disciples were telling those, bringing those little children to Jesus, hey, quit that. Quit letting your children go to Jesus. But Jesus used them as a great and an amazing example as he told the disciples this in verse 14, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly, I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter. There's great implications for rejecting Christ. Adults who know it all, adults who have all the answers can reject Christ. 
There are some things that keep people from trusting Christ. And, and listen, we allow our minds to get in the way. And we uh, allow culture to get in the way. But the only way is Jesus. And here Jesus says to come to him like a little child. That means the faith of a little child is, is that I don't have to have all the answers. But all I know is that little song, Jesus loves me, this I know. Lord, the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. We are weak, but he is strong. If we will come to Jesus and get our minds out of the way, get culture out of the way, and respond to Jesus in faith, guess what? He will save us. And when we die, just like Bill, we will go to heaven. I must be truthful with you. The opposite of that is when those who reject Jesus and live. This life is all we get, guys. It's all we get. And if we reject Jesus in this life, the Bible teaches about a place called hell. And God desires that we not go there. That's why he sent Jesus. So I implore you, the most important thing Bill would want you to know today, if you're here and you don't know Jesus, is that he loves you and he wants you to surrender your life to him. Whoever has Christ has life. Whoever does not, does not have life. How do you do that? It's simple. You surrender your heart. You say, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know that I deserve hell, but I, I love you. And Jesus, right now, I put my faith and my trust in you for the forgiveness of my sins. And guess what? In that moment, he becomes that shepherd. And those words on the page come alive in us. And we can experience his presence and we can experience his joy. Listen, Bill is experiencing the joy of heaven today because he surrendered his life like a little child to Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of his sins. And my friends, that is the amazing love of God. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you so much for Bill. And Lord, I thank you so much that you know, Bill had surrendered his life to you. And, and yes, Lord, um, we know Bill was not perfect, neither are any of us, but God, we know that we have a perfect Savior. So we rejoice in that today. We thank you that you got Bill safely to the other side, and that we'll see him today as we know you as personal Savior and Lord. God, we love you. We thank you. I pray you'd be comfort for this family, peace for this family. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand again as we are comforted and strengthened by the words of this great song, The Love of God.
song a long, long time ago, and the family brought this up to me, that this is in a country song, and if Bill loved it, he would crank this one up, and he loved this, and, and literally what this means is, God speed, God go with you, and, and so Bill would want to say that to you today, God go with you, God be with you, and so uh, we receive this benediction today, may the Lord bless you and keep you, and make his face to shine upon you, and give you peace. In Jesus' name. <laughs>